All right, good morning. Uh, I'm proud to stand here with my friends, uh, Representative Kevin Bratcher and Representative Jason Nemes, who serve as the House Majority Whip. Uh, over the course of this campaign, I've spoken about the issues that matter most to Kentuckians. The economy is, of course, top of mind for all of us. What the White House calls Bidenomics, the rest of us call 40-year record high inflation. And while Andy Bashir endorses Joe Biden and Bidenomics, I have presented a vision for prosperity to eliminate the income tax and get our people back to work. On education, our kids are still struggling with enormous mental health challenges and learning loss afflicted on them by Andy Bashir's short-sighted decision to shut down our schools. Earlier this year, I presented the Cameron Catch-Up Plan to get our kids caught up through an innovative 16-week tutoring program, raising teacher pay, and restoring discipline to our classroom. And of course, there is always the issue of crime. When I stood here a few months ago and unveiled the Cameron Public Safety Plan, I highlighted how crime had increased in Kentucky on Andy Bashir's watch. Homicides are up in Louisville nearly 80% since he took office. They are up 30% statewide. Jason and Kevin are here today because they have uncovered new information about the governor's misguided decision to release nearly 2,000 criminals back onto our streets and into our communities. In 2021, Representative Nemus acquired a report from the Administrative Office of the Courts which revealed that half of the criminals released by Governor Bashir committed misdemeanors upon release and a third of them committed felonies upon release. But it turns out, though, uh, it's now much, much worse. New data acquired by Representative Bratcher has revealed that nearly 70 percent of the prisoners released by Andy Bashir have recommitted offenses. 70 percent. And 52 percent of all prisoners released by the governor have recommitted felonies, including multiple instances of kidnapping and sodomy. These aren't our numbers. These are numbers released by the Administrative Office of the Courts. And again, they are much, much worse than previously known. Felonies are, by their very nature, serious violations of society's laws that break the trust of a community. The criminals released by Bashir went on to commit heinous acts like homicide, rape, serious assault, kidnapping, and bur burglary. This is the result of the short-sighted decision by Andy Bashir to release criminals from prison. Now, he continues to defend his actions as being compassionate. But where is the compassion for the families and communities ripped apart by the violence of these criminals? He should look into the eyes of these victims and say that he is sorry. But why won't he? Even California Governor Gavin Newsom has said if he had COVID to do all over again, he would handle it differently. He even lies about our crime problem, undercounting homicides across the state. He touted a report and said there had been double-digit decrease in serious crime, and Andy Bashir was wrong. He runs around claiming without sharing evidence that Kentucky's recidivism rate is at its lowest point ever. But if that's true, then Andy Bashir's handpicked criminals for release were significantly more violent than the average released prisoner. Now, when I mentioned this in the forum yesterday in Paducah, that more than 50% of the prisoners he released had committed felonies, the governor shook his head, acting like it wasn't true. But we know the real Andy Bashir. He cannot be questioned, and he will not apologize. But I won't stand for it, and I know Kentuckians throughout our Commonwealth will not either. We must change course on November 7th. I think I speak for Jason and Kevin when I say this is not something we are happy to talk about. Each one of these crimes is a heinous act with victims whose lives have been changed forever. Thankfully, my 12-point public safety plan will address violent crime across the state. It includes proposals like recruitment and retention bonuses for police, harsher penalties for drug traffickers, pursuing the death penalty for those who kill a cop, and installing, which I think is really important, a Kentucky State Police post here in Louisville. 
As governor, I will be able to deliver. This current governor has zero relationship with the state legislature. Zero. When he rolled his crime and education plans out a few weeks ago, neither the House Speaker nor the Senate President had heard from Andy Bashir. That will change when I'm governor. Imagine the day when you have a governor who has a relationship with the General Assembly, with Kevin and Jason, who can lead, work together, and deliver solutions for our Commonwealth. I believe we can get the most ambitious agenda whether it's on education or public safety through the state legislature. And I'm proud to stand here before you today as the governor who has been endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police. They know that my safety plan and my relationships with the General Assembly mean that we will restore law and order to Kentucky. With that, I'm gonna hand the podium over to Jason. Thank you, General. Proud to be standing here with General Cameron. I, I wanna make a note, this is not this didn't just come up in the context of a campaign. We told the governor before he did this, do not do this. This will put our people in jeopardy. We told him, do not do this. This will make more uh, victims. Then they put a program together saying what they, who they were going to release. We looked at that program. They said there wouldn't be any violent offenders. There were scores of them who they released. There were a number of people who had years and years left to serve. Some people who had just uh, been been convicted. I'll mention three which came up at the top of the list that I was looking at earlier today. There was a, a person named Mr. Adams convicted of a violent crime that served 130 days of the 1,460 he was sentenced for. Ms. Stovall was uh, convicted of trafficking, first degree uh, trafficking in meth, excuse me, he served 476 days of 2,120 days that, that she was sentenced, later committed a violent crime after being released. By the governor. Mr. Doolin served 310 days of 1,825 for trafficking in fentanyl. And we know how obviously fentanyl has ravaged our communities. These are just three examples of scores of examples of people who had a lot of uh, time left to serve. It didn't have to be this way. We told the governor not to do this. We told him it was going to be, um, be, be, be very harmful to our communities. And he went forward and he did it anyway. And so what we found a few months after we, that it had happened, as, as General Cameron had suggested, was about a third of them had reoffended, uh, committing felonies, and about 50% of them had reoffended with misdemeanors. And I look back now at the numbers that Representative Bratcher just, re just received, it's astonishing that 70% has reoffended and over 50% reoffended with felonies. And as I think Representative Bratcher will note, that's the ones that have been caught. Those are, those are real Kentuckians whose lives have been torn upside, turned upside down by criminals who should not have been released, but for, it wouldn't have been released, but for the governor's actions, many of whom still would have years to serve in our prisons. Our, I'll leave with this. Our fundamental responsibility as government officials is to protect our people. When we find somebody who has harmed our people and we release them back into the communities, what do we think they're going to do? What do we think they're going to do? And we're not talking about minor crimes here. We're talking about very serious crimes. So when the governor shakes his head yesterday in disbelief or saying that it's not true, he needs to shake his head in shame. And what I would suggest to him, and I've got the, I've got the names of, the, of, of a number of these victims, what I would suggest to him is they get on the phone and he call them and he apologize. And he say, I didn't intend to be a participant in this. It wasn't what I wanted. But we did tell him, Governor, do not do this. We told him beforehand, and he did it anyway. And so now we think that... Um, uh, we want the people to know this so they can hold the governor accountable for the additional crimes that have been committed um, by people who he has released early and he shouldn't have and he was warned or not to. Thank you. Well, guys, you know, Jason talked about the, the cases that are cleared. Just think about it. A nationwide, anywhere from 47, depending on the year, 47% to 51% of murders are solved and less than... 30% of property crimes are solved. So there's a lot of crime going on out there, and we don't need a governor like Mr. Bashir that is soft on these issues. We need somebody that's going to stand tall against crime. It's going to come down and work with the legislature. You know, I worked with the Attorney General Cameron on the juvenile, uh, the juvenile crime bill that I passed last session. I went to him and his people for some 
<clears throat> information. They were always good, to easy to work with. Text them, call them. They were always there. Andy Bashir has never once stepped foot in the, to talk to a judiciary member, which me and Jason are part of, the House Judiciary and the Interim Judiciary. Never once has he come to talk to us about any of his ideas. I don't know if he has any ideas because I've never talked to him. Maybe I've said hello to him a couple times when he was Attorney General. And that's really a shame because Kentucky needs a serious governor that will take on these issues. And we don't need somebody just playing politics 24-7, and that's what he is doing. Uh, Kentucky needs a serious governor, and uh, I hope we will elect Daniel Cameron. Thank you. Well, Jason, uh, Kevin, thank you all, and uh, thanks for those that uh, are in attendance, attendance today. I think it's incredibly important that we continue to shed light on this governor's irresponsible actions to let criminals out of jail that ultimately have preyed on our communities and hurt so many families and have caused so many victims. Uh, and that's, again, why I'm honored to be endorsed by the Kentucky State Fraternal Order of Police, because I think they want leadership in this state that is going to stand up for them, but also is going to make sure that our community is safe. And I've demonstrated over the course of my time as Attorney General that I will stand up for law enforcement and I will make sure that our communities are safe.